Hey everyone, welcome to Sea Salt and Company. We are going to edit this image with our newest collection, the Lotus Collection. Um, this is the before image and this is the after. And yes, we can do all of this with the Lotus Collection. Looks like a lot of work, but it's really not. This one does incorporate quite a few of these actions, so I'm gonna run through these and show you how to get this effect with your image. I'm gonna delete this layer as um, that's our edited one. So here's our before image and we're gonna get started. The first thing I wanna do is go ahead and work on the background of this image and blurring some of the details um, before we add any of our toning and primers and things of that nature. So what I'm gonna work with here on this one is um, under the Lotus Blurs where you're going to play the blur brush on Septal. So press play and let that play. Now that it's finished playing, uh, make sure you have your brush selected and it is on a white soft round brush and make sure your black layer mask is selected before we paint on our image. Make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm just going to start painting the background. If I get a little bit on her, that's okay. We'll go back and brush off and make it blend in. Now what I want to do is this um, layer here is at 80%. We are going to bump it up to 100%. It's going to make it more blurry as you can see here. Now obviously the blur has went onto the subject and really blurred out the details that we don't want it to do. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my uh, brush here and at the opacity I'm going to bump it down to about 40%. And I'm going to change my colors here. I'm gonna, I want to use black because I'm going to erase back, um, but I'm going to blend it out um, so it's it just fades into the more dominant blur there on the sides. So what we're going to do here is start around our subject here to bring back her hair details and her little dress here. I'm holding down my brush so it's just lightly fading out. If you let go of your brush and tap again, it will take off more. Now what I'm gonna do is go back up to my opacity of my brush. I'm gonna put it down to about 25%. I'm gonna brush back some more around her to bring some more of those flowers back into focus. Make it more believable. I'm going to tap over just a little bit more to bring some of it back even more. I'm right up in here, um, I'm going to bring some more blur back in here, so I'm going to change my paintbrush color back to white, so I'm going to paint back on the blur, just lightly, and you can leave the opacity at 25% like we did up there, because just want to bring it, fade it in just a little bit, and I'm going to change my colors again, back to black, so I can mask some more right in here, over this flower here, I want to take some of that blur off right in there. I'm going to change it back to white again so I can just bring in just a little bit more blur right here in the background here. Not too much, just a little bit. Now what I want to do is I'm going to flatten my image. And this gives us a base now. Our background is blurred the way that I would like it to be. Um, and it's, it's, you know, more blurred here in the edges, but more focused here, so we bring back these details here. The next thing we're going to run is our Blur Soft Spin. So click on your Soft Spin layer, our action, and press play. And once that is played, um, make sure your black layer mask is selected. 
white is your foreground color. You have your brush selected and it's soft and round. Um, now earlier we uh, bumped down the opacity so I want to make sure I bring my brush opacity back up to 100 so we're getting full effect of this action here. And we're just going to paint over our image to bring in that effect. Now obviously it's a little bit too much for this image, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity to 50%. And then um, I'm going to change my foreground color here to black so I can paint back a little bit on that effect. Make sure that mask is still selected. And um, I'm going to put my opacity down to 50% as well for my brush. I'm just going to brush back or those little flowers. Make sure it's not on her little dress here. And it's just um, a subtle effect here. I didn't want a whole bunch of the radial spin on this one. Just enough to add, kind of boost that blur a little bit. And we'll leave it as such. After that is played, I am going to merge this group with my background layer. So I'm gonna hold my shift key down select my background layer, right click and merge layers so it applies that effect and it doesn't uh, distort it in any way. The next action I want to do is the mat. I want to use a mat here and that's really going to boost our um, even though the image, the after was pretty bright and, and colorful um, and you would think maybe I used a haze, I'm actually going to use a matte and kind of diffuse it and kind of make the blur pop out a little bit more and of course we'll be adding our colors to it as well so it kind of um, it just boosts all that. So I'm going to use matte base one, I'm going to press play and as you can see here after we played the uh, matte base one it really um, blurred the, the background, the shadows, it really um, boosted those and kind of made them film like really made it look more blurry um, which I was really going for um, but what I'm going to do here is I don't like the matting on her face um, so we're going to mask this off of her I'm going to lower my brush size I'm going to go back and put my opacity of my brush back up to 100 percent now this layer mask is white so to get this color off, this matte off, I need to make sure my brush is black. Um, and that's going to erase off that matte, uh, matte on her face. So make sure that layer is selected, your layer mask, and then we're going to brush back um, to bring back her face and details. So her hair and everything. I just really wanted to focus on my background for the matte. Alright, the next action we are going to play is our canvas primer. Now yes, most times you can play your primers first before you start your image, but I kind of played it up a little bit this time. It just also shows you that it doesn't have to be first. You can, you know, again, play things first, then focus on cleaning up your image. Because again, I wanted to work on that background first and then work up from that. So I'm going to choose the primer one because I am working with, I'm wanting this image to be lighter and more airier so therefore I'm going to choose the primer one versus the primer two so I can get that from this. So I'm select one and I'm going to press play. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this primer layer on top of the matte base one. The reason being is because I want this to be applied to the changes I made with the matte. I want it to be played on, I want that effect to be on top of it, um, not below the matte because um, I want it to affect the matte as well. So as you can see, it lightened it and really made it flow with um, the tone on her face. But now, under primer one here, I'm going to open up that group. You can see all the layers I have in here. I'm going to play with some of these layers um, to really get the effect that I'm going to go with. I do not want a vignette on here. I don't want my edges deeper or anything like that as I'm working with a lighter image here. Um, the soft tone let me see. Turn it on and off. And I'm going to leave it off um, so it just kind of keeps it the same color it was, no extra brightening to it, as we're going to get those brighter tones from adding on other actions here. Now the next layer I want to work with is the desaturate. And the reason I want to work with this one a little bit is because um, 
obviously it toned down the greens because we're working with a lot of green here, um, which is great. Um, but it also, once it's on, it kind of desaturated and kind of lost some of the color of the subject. So I want to click on that layer mask. And with my brush selected, it's already on black. You want to make sure you use black since we are painting on top of a white layer mask. My opacity is 100, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to go back over her and bring back her tones and color so I don't lose that. But I'm going to leave that applied to my background because I, I really like how it um, kind of duped down that green. It was so powerful. So I just mask off of her. Now I'm finished with this, so I'm going to collapse this group. And we're going to move on to um, working with our dreams. I love the dreams. Um, you're going to see how it works here, um, kind of adding that pretty magical light and kind of defines and, and adds on to our dreamy uh, background to it. Um, I'm going to select the dark right. I'm going to press play. As you can see, this action here has added that pretty diffused light, a little magic light here in this corner, and it also kind of deepened around the other edges of the image. Um, I am going to lower the opacity of this layer to about um, 30%, just so it lightly adds that in there, because once we add our other tones to it, it's really going to magnify and make it really soft and light and pretty. If I make it look, if I make the layer higher, um, it really just, once I add on the other tones, it's just too much. So I'm going to leave it about 30%. We can always change it later on. If we decide we want a little bit more of that magic light in that corner, we can do so. Now we're going to get into our Lotus Tones. And the first one I want to work with is Prosperity. So I'm going to click our Tones Prosperity. I'm going to press play. And I'm going to leave that at 100%. It was just a subtle change of the tones. As you can see, we can turn it off and back on. Um, it really just kind of magnified the, the um, shadows in here. It really brought some tone into those, and I really like that. And then also brings her skin tone down to blend in more with the rest of the image. It's not so harsh from the natural light that's already um, on her. So the next tone I want to play is Awakening. We're going to play that right on top of the Prosperity. So just uh, find Awakening and press play. Now I love this color, but it is a little much on her. Um, and back in here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity of this group uh, from the awakening action to about 70%. So just um, tones it down a little bit. And I'm also going to mask it off our subject here because I really it brought in too many um, reds and magentas to her skin tone. I really don't want that on her. So make sure your um, brush is at 100% and your black layer mask is selected as this is a white layer mask here. And we're just going to um, brush that tone off of her and her hair as um, not too fawn of that color on her. And that's much better. The next color tone we're going to play is Murky Waters. We're going to play that right on top of the Awakening and press play. Um, I really like the tones it brought back. It's really kind of bringing it a little bit lighter in our edges and kind of desaturated a little bit. Um, I love this, but again, um, same with this one as with Awakening. I don't like it on her skin tone as much. Um, and I would like to dial back on the opacity of the whole action itself. So I'm going to bring this action down to about 50%. And then uh, with my layer mask selected, I'm also going to brush off her skin tone here. Um, that effect off of there to bring it back. And that works great. Um, the next one I want to play, our last and uh, last tone is Enlightenment. So I'm going to select Enlightenment and press play. Now obviously this tone brings a lot of reds in here and we're going to back off on that a little bit but I did like how it made our background um, really kind of desaturated that green even more and made it brighter which is what I was going for in this image. So um, I'm going to dial back, um, put this about 30% 
And then again, um, we're going to mask off this tone off of the subject as it's too red. So again, with your brush selected, just um, go over your subject if it's too much. If you do like the tone, um, depending on what kind of image you're working with, just dial back on the opacity of your uh, brush when you're erasing off and um, you can still have some of the tone, but just kind of brush it off a little bit. So this looks good. Now this is the um, all the tones we're going to work with here. The next section we're going to work with is our lights, our lotus lights. So we're going to scroll down here and find the lotus lights here. Um, the color I'm going to work with is the jaded. It kind of is a little bit bluish green and we're going to play that and work with that. You can play it right on top of all your other actions here. And the Lotus Lights adds more of light leaks type styles to the image in, in different uh, directions and they're really pretty. Now this um, played just by itself is a little much with the blues. I didn't really want too, too much. So I'm going to dial back on the lights. I'm going to put it about 40%. So we get that color, but it blends in nicely. So if we turn this off, you can see the difference. This was what we worked with and also lights up the image too. So now we turn it back on it just slightly lights around here and, and it's really pretty. So what we're going to work with next is another light and I'm going to select Rosewood and press play right on top of Jaded. And you can see how pretty that just made our whole image and really brought in some of those pink tones, but still you can see that the blue and the green in it, it's like a mixture, even with a little bit of yellow. Um, what I'm going to do here is also dial it back just a little bit and I'm going to set it at 30%. It's a really pretty toning. And what I'm also going to do, because as you can notice um, with this color here, um, it went on her skin tone a little bit, which is fine, but I'm just going to brush it off just a little bit. And I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to lower my brush opacity to 50%. And brush just over here on this one side, just a little bit. Not much. And then the last light we're going to work with is Peach Fuzz. So I selected Peach Fuzz and I press play. And this is really pretty toning as well. Um, I'm going to bring this one down to about 70 or 75 percent. And it just really just tones off this image and just makes everything flow together beautifully. It looks very, very nice. And I'm okay with the way the toning has kind of went over her skin tone a little bit. It kind of blends the whole image together. I really do like that. Um, what I think I might do um, is back down here in my primer, I might dial back on that just a little bit. I'm going to turn off the layers so you can kind of see the before and after of why I'm going to do this. And you see when I turn it off how it just kind of makes everything kind of go dull. Um, I do like it and I'm going to have it up, but it's a little bit too much, too bright in the center. So I just want to dial this back to about 70%, just slightly. It kind of, it's not so, the light isn't so harsh on her face. So this is how you edit this image. We can turn off all these layers so you can see the before again. And um, of course our after. So you can see how it's so green and just hits you in the face with all that green and now we just lightened it all up and made it so magical and pretty and made our subject stand out against that background because with that green background she's lost and the color cast and everything and this just brings her so magical and pretty um, so yes you can achieve all this within this collection it's so easy to do saves you so much time um, to get these results that you and your clients will both enjoy